What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share it, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. And we appreciate your support and getting us this far. And if you haven't already, please hit that join button right next to the subscribe button. That enables us to keep growing, enables us to earn a little money so I can help pay the people to help bring Unique Access Entertainment to a little bit more, which is always a good thing and a beautiful thing that they much appreciate. So thank you so much. And to our members, thank you for joining so that you can watch this episode of the 1st and 15th, like all of the episodes early. So today for the 1st and 15th, what I wanted to do is talk about female rappers. Now, we got Nicki Minaj, we got Cardi B, we got Megan Thee Stallion, we got Sweetie, we got Lotto, we got <clears throat> City Girls on the super popular big mainstream pop side we got saw rock check my interview with her amazing album with the sharecropper's uh daughter and of course her song forever we got rhapsody those are some of the artists that are going on now and we have this explosion of of course there's dozens of other female rappers that are out that are big that are making things happen you know on the one hand i see a lot of people saying oh man these girls are just rapping about sex there's no substance on the other hand, I see a lot of people saying this is a great era of female rap. We've never had this many prominent female rappers and this and that. Neither of which I really agree with, because of course, like I said, with Saw Rock and Rhapsody and Nicki Minaj in particular, they don't only talk about sex. The three of them, of course, are revered lyricists. And then on the other side of things, there's always been great female rappers. And that's something I wanted to talk about today, because I wanted to take a minute and highlight many of them not to go in depth or detail about every single female rapper ever because of course we don't have enough time there's so many but i definitely wanted to highlight a few because i think a lot of times people overlook or gloss over some of the contributions that we've gotten from the beginning now first of course we've got to say mc shaw rock and give a shout out to dana dane for linking me with her and you know you can check my interviews with mc shaw rock right there she was in the game so long, she was a B-girl first. And then she helped form the Funky Four, Funky Four plus one more. Then they had the Saturday Night Live appearance. They got so much that they did. And it's just amazing when you realize that MC Shaw Rock was there at the beginning when rap was barely breaking through on a mainstream level. Rap hadn't really been on, hadn't been on record yet. Hadn't been a single, Rapper's Delight hadn't existed yet. King Tim's a third Fatback band hadn't come out yet and MC Shaw Rock was there she was in the mix she was making it happen and I think it's important that we acknowledge this because female rappers have been there and been contributing and been making it happen since the 70s and I think that's very important we got the sequence of course as well we got Dimples D we got Sparky D. And with Sparky D, she had the rivalry with Roxanne Shante. And if you look, with Marley Marl with Dimples D and Roxanne Shante, female rappers helped Marley Marl really get his big breaks in the game. And that's something that's consistent through rap history, which I'll get to in another minute. But when you look at and realize that, not to say it wouldn't have happened, but it might not happen we, without Roxanne Shante and Dimples D to a lesser degree, but we might not have MC Shan or Cool G Rap or Marley Mar or Big Daddy Kane or Biz Marquee or Master Ace or Craig G. Maybe not at all, but at least not in the incarnations that we know and love them. And that's something that all sparked from, especially Roxanne Shante, the work that Marley Marl did with her back in the day. And that's something that, you know, a lot of people forget that female rap and rappers helped launch a lot of great things in rap and without them what do we have case in point salt and pepper you know some of my early favorites of theirs were chick on the side and i'll take your man and through their work with herbie lovebug of course we get kid and play we get dana dane we get kwame we get all these great artists that herbie lovebug worked with and produced and then we get some of the big big salt and pepper songs like let's talk about sex and what a man but Salt and Pepper was able to thrive and dominate, be the first superstar female rappers, be the best selling female rap group of all time, win all kinds of awards, do humanitarian work, release some phenomenal music along the way, 
and show that rap was something that could be PG, could be thoughtful, and of course, could come from a female perspective at the highest level. And they did it while being sexy, while dancing, while having great raps, while touring and collaborating with some of the biggest artists in the game at the time, while they were among, if not the biggest artists at the time when Salt and Pepper was dominating. And that is a remarkable accomplishment, something they started with, you know, in the mid 80s and continued for more than a decade. And they just got their start to Hollywood Walk of Fame. I did a lot of interviews. You can check out some of them there. But the amazing thing is Salt and Pepper's putting it down. Mention Roxanne Shantae. She had launched the Roxanne Wars based off the UTFO Roxanne Roxanne. And that's where we get the real Roxanne, a whole other artist who, you know, worked with a lot of great people. Hitman Howie T, for instance, Special Ed, L.A. Posse, Jim Master J. They all work with real Roxanne and helped her rise to prominence. She was on Select Records and a major record label that was putting out a lot of great rap. So, you know, we got to realize that female rap has been right there all along the way. And then, of course, we got MC Light who you know at the time was one of the hardest female rappers best female rappers and definitely a phenomenal artist in her own right and she was on self-destruction she held it down just like miss melody did on self-destruction but mc light shined on that song and did a great job in the video mc light was talking about cappuccino with drug use she was talking about crammed understand you paper thin relationship issues cha 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 with the braggadocio rough neck with the type of dude she liked she had such diversity so many different things going on and she was a phenomenal artist and again in her time was one of the biggest artists and she's continued to thrive in so many ways behind the scenes doing voiceovers and doing television and film work that continues till this day uh, another contemporary of MC Lights back in the day was Sweet T, who I've had the fortune to interview multiple times for Unique Access. Thanks to Dana Dane for introducing me to her. You can check out one of my links with Sweet T right there. She did a lot of great music. It's my beat, of course. <laughs> you know, it was a huge song. She was on Profile Records, home to Dana Dane, home to Run EMC, home to Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock, among many others, DJ Quick later, of course. But the major labels were, or the major independent labels, the major rap labels were investing in female rappers. They were being successful. Sweet T, you know, he's just another example of that. Another Herbie, Herbie Lovebug protege who was putting it down, you know. And speaking of protégés, when you look at the reality of what was happening in rap, the biggest movement in rap is gangster rap. And who really launched the commercialization of gangster rap in the biggest way, none other than JJ Fad. And how did they do that? They were the ones with Supersonic that gave Dr. Dre his first gold record, gave Easy E the money to really finance and get Ruthless Records to the next level to put out the Easy E, Easy Does It, to put out NWA, Straight Out Compton, and then this avalanche of records that we get from Michelle, Above the Law, the DOC, and so on and so on, and eventually Bone Thugs and Harmony. But all that came with the success of J.J. Fad and Supersonic and Supersonic the album, all of which I detail at great length in my book, The History of Gangsta Rap. And that's very important because J.J. Fad gave Easy e credibility and money. And two things are very important in the music industry for anyone that's followed it. And, you know, that's important. So you have Easy e backing J.J. Fad. And then we had another artist that I've had, like with JJ Fed, who I, there's a link to one of my interviews with them, but another artist I've had the fortune of interviewing on Unique Access Entertainment is Antoinette. And I think it's important. She had a rivalry with MC Light and stuff, but gotta remember, man, she was looked at as the female Rock Kim when she was coming out. So female rappers are doing well, they're selling, they're succeeding. And this is all in the 1980s, by the way. I haven't even got to the 90s yet. But they're having all this success, they're excelling, they're delivering great records, they got great videos. And someone like Antoinette, who I have immense respect for and who I also got to interview for Unique Access Entertainment, she was being compared to Rakim or being viewed, you know, Nas is the second coming of Rakim later, Antoinette was the female Rakim. So 
that's the type of respect that Antoinette had. And she, you know, is a phenomenal artist and just, you know, had the rivalry with light. She just had a lot going on and was dropping ferocious story rhymes, all kinds of stuff. And this is the type of thing that I think I don't want viewers of Unique Access Entertainment to forget about or to gloss over or to not realize as we get older, but also as newer artists come out and we're seeing a lot of the artists do a lot of major things and nobody's really done it as bigger, better than Queen Latifah, of course. Of course, starting out singing, coming with Flavor Unit, 45 King, etc. Uh, then managing Naughty by Nature with through Flavor Unit, and then of course she worked with Outkast in the same capacity. But she, of course, Queen Latifah has evolved into much more than that. Being a singer, being an accomplished film and television actor, doing all kinds of stuff. She's had a phenomenal career, and on top of all that, is still revered for her music, and justifiably so. And of course. One of her biggest songs is Ladies First, which features Moni Love, who had her own successful career and who also dropped a lot of hits. Uh, it's a shame being among them. Moni in the Middle, another one. And, of course, being a radio host and being in the group the alumni with Dana Dane, Kwame, Chubb Rock, Special Ed. So, uh, and I've had the fortune of seeing them perform. But the thing is, these females have been putting it down for a long time, since the 70s. And of course, we get to the 90s, we got Yo-Yo. Make way for the mother load, stomping into the 90s, being on Ice Cube's America's Most Wanted. It's a man's world. So Yo-Yo has been a steady force in the game, you know, whether she's collaborating with Ice Cube, putting out her own material, or being on the remix with Queen Latifah, MC Light for Brandy's I Wanna Be Down. So Yo-Yo is a fixture in the game and still, putting it down on the entertainment level. We see her on television all the time. So it's just crazy. And then you look at Nikki D, who's best known for Daddy's Little Girl, but you go and look at her her debut album, her first and only album on Def Jam. That thing is full of social commentary, full of amazing stories. And there's one of my interviews with Nikki D. But Nikki D was spitting, man. Ice-T was the first one to ever hear a rap. She was on Def Jam, first female signed to Def Jam. And this is in the Def Jam heyday when they were putting out haymakers. You know, they had Slick Rick, they had LL Cool J, they had Public Enemy. They were bringing the noise, man. And, and Def Jam was it. And Nikki D was right there. And that's something also not to forget. Then we have like X Clan had ISIS. And then a little known person, look her up if you don't remember her, Shazzy. So, I mean, we had the conscious rap too, even if they didn't get as big. And then on the gangster side of things in the early 90s, of course, we have Lady of Rage. And she was putting it down and doing big things. And directly tied to that, a lot of people said she was trying to be the female Snoop initially, or that was Jermaine Dupri's idea. Of course, I'm talking about the brat, first female solo artist to go platinum. So she was hugely successful, selling a lot of records. And, you know, a lot of people love the brat, still do. Then we go to the West Coast again. Then we got Sugar T. Down with the click in E40. You know, she was the inspiration, you know, as she told me for Captain Save a Ho. Sprinkle Me, E40's biggest song for the first part of his career, at least, was his duet with Sugar T. So, you know, she had topical songs on her own, like Billy Badass, but Sugar T was able to shine and have a successful solo career, but also shine alongside E40, shine alongside the click and make it happen. And then, when we're getting to the mid 90s too, of course, the two biggest at the time were Little Kim and Foxy Brown. And yes, they shifted a lot of what females were doing because they were more overt in their sexuality. They were more willing to show their bodies and their physiques and to do that in their videos, to talk about explicit sex acts in their music. But that also doesn't diminish or shouldn't diminish their value as artists and both of them had great runs and both of them put out multiple albums that were excellent and very impactful because just as the rappers before Little Kim and Foxy Brown were inspiring each other, Little Kim and Foxy Brown inspired not only each other, I think, but a lot of the rappers that we see today. And that's the testament to it. Two of the artists that were coming out around the same time a little bit later would have been Gangsta Boo and Mia X. Rest in peace to Gangsta Boo. 
you know, I did a great interview with her also in my book, The History of Gangster Rap. But Gangster Boo, I've known since the 90s. I've known, you know, since I started hanging out with 3 Six Mafia and going to Memphis with them. But Gangster Boo brought that, you know, that wildness, that, that craziness. And Mia X was holding down the tank as the best female rapper on No Limit, but also bringing that Southern charm and flavor that really, really helped break through in ways that set the stage. And both Gangsta Boo and Mia X were like tough and rugged, but they were a lot more street than I think a lot of people viewed Little Kim or Foxy Brown, which, you know, was another thing. And Marvelous, of course, being down with Sibo is another artist that I had the fortune of interviewing for Unique Access Entertainment that I mean, Marvelous was doing odes to Tupac, you know, that's what she told me with her Ghetto Blues album. That was an ode to Tupac. So the female rappers in the 90s were a whole different breed. And then we got to, of course, mention the best selling female artist of all time on the solo level, which is Lauren Hill, who obviously emerged with the Fugees and then became a, a solo superstar and put out one of the most acclaimed albums in history. And I'm not talking about rap history. I'm talking about Grammy winning. I'm talking about overall, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill is one of the most acclaimed albums in music history. And it's released by a female rapper who also happens to sing, who also is a dynamic actor. And that's just another major accomplishment from a female rapper. And she brought, she showed that in the aftermath and in the wake and at the same time of what was going on with little Kim and Foxy Brown uh, focusing and using this brazen sexuality that Lauren Hill was able to demonstrate that you could have conscious raps, you could focus on love, you could focus on spirituality and emotion and outsell little Kim and Foxy Brown combined. Like I said, Salt and Pepper's the best song female rap group of all time. Lauren Hill is the best selling female rapper of all time and it's no coincidence in my opinion that both of them deal with and dealt with serious subject matter whether that's a relationship matter whether that's societal matters or in the case of salt and pepper like i said with let's talk about sex uh safe sex and health these are all weighty topics but female rappers were out there doing it big and doing it as well if not better than the men and that's why i wanted to make this video and when you Think about it too, on the crossover commercial side, we got Missy Elliott, who was blending rap and R&B at the highest level, especially with her collaborations with Timberland, but she worked with so many different artists. And then you got Eve and Trina that were also coming out in the, 19, in the late 1990s and putting it down as well. So there's been this onslaught of female rappers, and I'm only mentioning many of the more popular ones. So of course there's dozens of others that I haven't mentioned or didn't go into detail about here on the 1st and 15th, but that's why when I hear stuff like, oh man, we didn't have female rap like this back in the day, actually we did. So either you don't remember, you didn't know, you weren't paying attention, you don't care, or you're just wrong. And I think as people that love rap and people that are watching this, I know you do because we made it this far in the video and you've been following unique access to whatever capacity you have but the reality is is a lot of female rappers have been putting it down and of course once we get into the 2000s we're getting the remy Maz and the doggies angels and 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 that's where you know the table's set for later in my opinion Nicki minaj to come out and dominate but then also to have the room for the Sarox and the rhapsodies to also excel and you know, to see someone like Lotto, if you listen to her freestyle or have seen her or go off the head or do writtens that are the quote unquote freestyles, she can really rap. And I think that's all a testament to not only hip hop culture in general, but to what MC Shyrock was doing way back in the 70s, all the way up till today. So that's what I wanted to do today here on the 1st and 15th, because I think it's very important that we acknowledge you know, the people that helped make rap what it is and made us love it. And a lot of the people that help us make love, uh, make us love rap are female rappers. And that's why I wanted to highlight a lot of them today here on the first 15th. So thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you have subscribed right next to that is the join button. And thank you so much to all of our members who are helping unique access grow and expand in so many different ways. So you know, hit me up in the comment section as always. I look forward to reading your guys' feedback and we'll hit you back. 
But in the meantime, in between time, I'm Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. Thank you for watching me on the 1st and the 15th. Be sure to check out the History of Gangster Rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of Gangster Rap features exclusive interviews with Ice-T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The History of Gangster Rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip-hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Your MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.